Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about how SQL injection works. I'm gonna actually show you the code of what it looks like. We're gonna look at the database and how the input functions. So a lot of this is taken from the portfolio build that we just did in the last few videos. So if you have not watched those portfolio build videos, this is how SQL injection works and how we wrote the code. Okay, so right here is the code for our SQL database. These queries right here are what is going to be sending our information to the database. So here is our portfolio build. And if we click on our SQL injection over here, we're brought to our SQL injection page. We can create a user right here. So we'll make a new user just like this. We can submit our new user and we can check out our database and we can refresh it. And we have our new user right here. So if we come back over to our code, let's look and see what's happening. So we're taking in our input from our HTML. It gets passed over through the API, which I'm not gonna show you because that's not the point of the video. And we have our query right here. So this is actually a secure input right here for SQL. So this is, you're not able to inject into this because we're taking our user and our password and we're sending those in right here inside these little variables right here that are not that are not going to be able to break our query statement. So if we come back over here and we create a user with all of the bad characters, so we'll just say a bad and we'll throw in some of the bad characters and then we can actually just copy this and send it over here. And if we submit this and we come back to our database and refresh it, we have all of our bad characters inside of our username because it doesn't break our statement and our server picks it up right here with no problems at all through the API. But on our vulnerable code right here, you can see we have these queries. So this rec body, this rec.body.user is actually gonna take the input that we put from this login and it is going to put all of it right here in this statement and then send the statement. It doesn't just send over the variables. So if we come over here and we just add in a single quote, it will break for us our statement and then we can inject into it. So I wanna show you what this looks like. So if we come over here and we put in these bad characters and we submit this, we're getting this error and it's actually gonna tell us like right here is we got this error, but more importantly, we crashed our server over here. So we actually need to restart our server and when you see this error message or we crash our server, this is what you see when you're looking for SQL injection and you're putting in that SQL quote everywhere is to see if you can break this statement and the server will send back a response. So we crashed our server. So if we were on a live program, we would know that this server is vulnerable to SQL injection. And in the case of a login right here, if we wanted to log in, we can just say anything. So we can just say, bad characters like we did before, we can put in our single quote, and now we can put in or one equals one, and then we'll close this off with our semicolon, and then we want our hashtag to comment out everything after our statement, our password doesn't really matter, so you can put anything in, and it's gonna tell us that we are logged in. And just to show you that this does work without the SQL statement, if we go ahead and submit this, it's gonna tell us that we have the wrong username because it doesn't exist. So we're actually able to bypass this login function because we have insecure code in our login function, but we have this secure code for our create a user function. If we wanted to, we could actually write a statement that is very similar to this, that where we pass in these variables right down here, and then our SQL injection would be fixed. So inside of a Node.js server, this is how you would write a SQL statement for secure code and insecure code. And it's gonna look really similar no matter what the programming language is. And we can actually see over here, our example of a database. This is this database server that I have linked up to the Node.js server. So now you have a really good visual of what's happening on the database server, what the database looks like, the code on the actual server running the web application, and then how it all works when you bring it all together inside of our portfolio build. If anything was unclear and you have any questions about SQL injection, you can go ahead and let me know down in the comments and I'll try to get to those and maybe we can do a series on SQL injection. Thanks for watching.